Hello and welcome to Spellcast, the Gaming Wizards podcast. Fuck Colossus number 15! You'll know what he's talking about soon enough. It'll it'll come up. So We are like one boss fight away from finishing Shadow of the Colossus. And the second to last one is probably the hardest one in the game. Oh yeah, no. I, I'm surprised you didn't just hit that point where you're just like, Fuck this, I'm done, you do it. Because I probably would have hit that point <laughs> See, that's, based on my first experience with the game. <laughs> that's like how I get with something that's like challenging me. I want to do it. And that's just like, that's that. Yeah. Like, you, I'm going to fucking do this and you're not going to stop me. It's if like it's, Super Meat Boy. Yeah, it's like Super yeah. Meat Boy. You just have to keep doing it like a thousand times until you get it. And I mean, I'm willing to do that when... Something like that happens. Fuck, it works. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> I was actually partially debating on, uh, like, while we were recording, um, trying to collect some of the fruit and stuff so we have more grip for the final part, but I was like, no, I'm tired of looking at this right now. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, like, I've mentioned this multiple times during our playthrough of Shadow, but, like, that... 15th Colossus, he is the one where I had to put down the controller. Like, I had to stop playing when I was first playing through it. I was like, I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna go watch a movie. I'm gonna eat some food. I'm gonna take a break. And I'm gonna come back. And I'm gonna kill this fucker. <laughs> and that's what I did. It, like, I took, like, a two-hour break, came back, and I beat him. And that was it. Yeah, it, sometimes yeah. That's, that's just what you have to do. Or, you know, take... For games like that, just take, like, a week break or a month break. <laughs> yeah, really. And then you come back, and whatever part you were having trouble with, you just do it like that. I've done that with a couple games. Yeah. Um, so, the two biggest examples for me would be, there's Final Fantasy X, where the first time I played through that game, I hit a boss fight where I got stuck. Because you're at a point in the game where you don't have Yuno with you, uh, so you have no summons. And throughout the game, I kind of relied on summons. They're really powerful, and mm -hmm. they're a good way to get through fights. So there's this boss fight with no summons, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> everyone, like, almost everyone else in my party is worthless. So I got stuck there for a while, and I stopped playing for, like, years. And then one day I just came back, did a very minimal amount of grinding, and then I just wiped the floor with the dude. <laughs> And I did, I think, the same thing with another boss that I got stuck on in the same game later. But, uh, that one, and then Ninja Gaiden on very hard mode. <laughs> that is yeah. a game that we would come back to, like, once a year, beat a stage, and then stop. <laughs> like, after ten years, we've finally done it! We're at the last boss, and we're dead. Um... The first time we played it, like, we got to the boss of the tutorial level, and then, like, after a while, we just gave up and didn't <laughs> touch the game for another, like, year. Then we finally beat him. We actually got past the second boss fairly easily in comparison. Like, we did it during that run. But the third boss just kicked our ass. So, again, we stopped playing it. The next time we played it, Literally, all we were doing was going from the save point to the boss, right? Mm -hmm. Took us three hours. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we beat him. We fucking beat him. And now we're stuck at the part where, like, you get... It's when you finally get to the city. And, like, it's where uh, you'll actually be able to backtrack through areas and stuff as you go. But we can't get from the first save point to the second save point in oh. the city. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Did I mention Ninja Gaiden's a fucking hard game? We should play it. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not too bad on normal once you've played the game before. Like, I don't know. I, I could see me being rusty and having some trouble starting out. But, like, th there's a point in the game where once we hit that point, there will only be, like, three really hard boss fights. Huh. Like, the last one is pretty difficult... And then, uh, Peach Ass. You'll understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Ugh, God, that fucking fight. Like, 
It's funny because it's, like, known for being one of the hardest fights in the game. I remember, uh... Coming across a picture once, it was like, Ryu Hayabusa had one weakness. Fucking Alma. <laughs> and it was just... It was like... Because, like, the cutscene... She, she's like a... She's like mutated monster girl thing or whatever. But, uh... Like, the cutscene just has this, like, gratuitous ass shot. <laughs> and it, it was just, like, that screenshot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, that was, and that was the caption. Okay, then. And that's why it always sticks in my mind, because, it's like, yeah, that was a hard and fucking boss fight, and, yes, the most memorable thing about that boss is the fact that her ass is just this giant peach <laughs> thing. It's, like... Big and round and shiny and looks like fruit. Okay. <laughs> so we called her Peach Ass. Okay, then. I thought it made sense. I still think it makes sense. And that's what really matters. Yeah. I mean, that and pizza. Okay. I'm just saying, pizza's good. It matters. Okay. Are you going somewhere with that, or just... Not really, it's just kind of an observation. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the conversation going. Where are your efforts? That's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> the fact that I can stop talking for five seconds? Yep. <laughs> How dare you stop talking for five seconds? People I'm... don't want to listen to five seconds of silence. I'm very good at not talking. <laughs> Uh, Some might say it's among my best skills, not talking. It's true, actually. Like, it's they're, a, they're... it's a surprisingly overlooked. Like, people are always like, "Oh yeah, I'm a good talker. I could talk for hours." It's like I can not talk for hours. I can listen, or you know, I can just not say something. Yeah, like there are th there are like a hundred things I could say right now. All of them would probably make the situation worse. So here's what I'm going to do. Not say them. I feel like everyone knows that like one quiet person where they're always like, come on, you should talk more. But then they don't think about that one annoying person they know that never shuts their mouth. <laughs> like, okay, so in you're saying that instead of having me, the guy who doesn't talk as much, you'd rather have two of that guy. Huh. Nope. <laughs> Keep on Short not answer. talking. Keep on keeping on, bro. I mean, it's not that it's not like you never talk. You just don't talk as much as everybody else. <coughs> so it kind of balances out. Yeah. So. And even then, something that I never talk is like, I'm on a fucking podcast right now. Yeah. Where the entire thing is talk about stuff. Yeah, mostly just ramble incoherently, mm -hmm. but, you know, not that, even that's, that's talking. Not even incoherently. Like, incoherently would be it doesn't make sense. We're following a train of thought. I suppose that's true. It's just kind of like, more like a roller coaster of thought. Yeah. It, it goes... I mean, if you take the first thing we start with and compare it to the last thing we start with without anything in between or any of the transitions, like, it would seem like we were pretty, like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Like, man, fuck Colossus number 15, it's so difficult, and that's why Twilight Sparkle is best pony. It's like, wait, what? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, how did we get here? Oh, man. Is there some kind of, like, time skipper or something? Like, we just have time lapses. <laughs> that's why our conversations jump around. There's actually no connecting points, we only think there are. Holy shit. <laughs> what if... Man, that's like some, that's like some crazy philosophical stoner shit. <laughs> Coming from somebody who's never been stoned. Two people who've never been stoned. Yeah, yeah. But you know, that's like, that's like the thing you see in like shows where they're making fun of stoners. Like that uh, episode like of Family Guy. They're like philosophical. But it's, like, stuff that's just, like, nonsense. Yeah. Like like that episode of Family Guy where Stewie's like, what if the only reason we die is because we accept it as an inevitability? <sighs> <laughs> it's like, and the, um, the only way to, like, 
understand it is to be stoned yourself, so it, like, translates itself in your head. <laughs> like, if you actually listen to somebody, they're actually, like, unlocking the secrets of the universe. Whoa. But to everybody else, it's just, like, yeah, man, what if we're, like, all trees You can inside. get past. Can you also get futured? Whoa! <laughs> you just blew my mind, man. Oh man. Uh, th- these are the great memorable moments of the TV shows we have. <laughs> the ones where people get stoned. Yeah. I feel like there's got to be something more to it than that. <laughs> yeah. I-, I don't know. I-, I think they're solid jokes. There's no insightful political commentary, or... I mean, in some cases. Yeah. <laughs> but not always. Sometimes it's just funny. <laughs> oh, man. But... Speaking of cartoons like that, I've been watching Futurama on uh, Netflix. I have watched that show in forever. I'm like three seasons in, and I had this realization... Like, Hypnotoad, one of the most iconic things of Futurama, has yet to show up. Yeah, it's, uh... I'm trying to... Like, it's been a while since I watched... I I watched the entire thing on Netflix a while ago. Yeah. But, yeah, there's a lot of... Like, well-known stuff that doesn't show up until pretty, like... a, A season or two into it. Yeah. It's just interesting. Like, huh. I, I don't know about you, but, like, when I think of Futurama, like, the top three things I think of are, like, the shut up and take my mom- money meme, Bender, and Hypnotoad. Yeah. Yeah, that's pre- pretty much, yeah. I-, I feel like those are kind of iconic to the series. The shut up and take my money thing just because... You know, it's a meme. Yeah. And there's also uh, the newscaster alien. Yeah. The green guy. Like specifically the one where he's like, Windmills don't work that way! Like, whenever I... Like, imat- like I read somebody who doesn't quite understand like a concept they're trying to talk about, I just think, That thing doesn't work that way! <laughs> just like in, in that, my head. Like, in same in that same voice, like in my head. That's funny. <laughs> it's just like... Like, watching religious people try to argue about evolution, I'm like, EVOLUTION DOESN'T WORK THAT WAY! GOOD NIGHT! Yeah. I know what you mean with that. Yeah. We, we won't get into the yeah, details that, that was just on e- the whole That was, like, the thing, first but... example that came into my head. Yeah, yeah no, people... it's a very good example, I think. Yeah. <laughs> like, if... oh, how are there still monkeys? Um, if yeah. we're... If evolution's real, why don't we have wings? We don't need wings. If Christianity evolved from Judaism, why are there still Jews? Because Jesus was a Jew. Then why aren't Christians Jews, too? Because reasons. <laughs> <laughs> and the, 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 there you go. That's like the summary of the argument. We weren't going to go into that, though. <laughs> no, we're, we, we won't go into all that. That's That's way too political yeah that's way too serious for us <laughs> like we gotta talk about i don't know something nonsensical my throat hurts from yelling yeah and being angry <laughs> yeah I- i'm pretty sure you clipped the mic a couple times i did yeah i'm pretty sure so have fun with that i mean there's nothing i can do it's clipped <laughs> whatever is there is there that's the problem with clipping the audio, which is why you don't do it. Yeah, Nathan. I'm sorry. I can't help it if I get angry and occasionally yell at things. It's okay. I think we all know that feeling. What do you think I am? Some kind of not human person? I was actually having moments like that in uh, Monster Hunter the other night. This one monster just kept trolling me, like, real hard. Because he moves around really fast. And he does a lot of damage, and it's bullshit. <laughs> so he, like, 
he would hit me, and, like, if you get hit too many times, uh, like, every once in a while you'll get, like, stunned. So you'll have to, like, you know, hit buttons and stuff to, like, get yourself moving again. So, uh, he would do that, and then he has this combo where he, like, steps forward at you, like, three times and, like, hits you with, like, lightning. So he'd stun me, and then while I was trying to recover, he'd do that. So I'd just take three more hits on top of being stunned, so I'd die. Oh. Yeah. That's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I, was, I was not happy with him. I can imagine. So, yeah, it. I failed fighting him, like, two times. Like, in between, like, built new armor. Meanwhile, uh, the rest of our group was fighting, like, one of the uh, end game things. So, while they were doing that, I was dying to this thing, and... One by the time they finished, it's like, so I I need to kill this thing. <laughs> Want to help? <laughs> help me get revenge? And we just kind of the three of us went in and just obliterated it. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was very gratifying. There was the part. There was the part of me that wanted to just straight up kill it, but capturing it has a higher percent chance for it to drop the item I needed it to drop. So. I still captured it, but I just wanted to murder the fucking thing. It's like, I'm so done with you. I never want to see your face again. Please die. Thank you. And then, of course, we had to fight another one because I needed two of the item and it only <laughs> dropped one. Oh. Uh, yeah. Good times. I remember doing shit like that in, like, the first Kingdom Hearts. Oh, God. Where you need, like, to kill certain enemies to get the drops for, like, yeah. ultimate weapon and all that. And there's, like, that one little mushroom thing the rare, that has, like, yeah, a 1 in 10 couples. million chance of even spawning in the few places it does spawn. Those things were slight pain in the ass to farm, that's for sure. Yeah. But, yeah, I remember doing it. Yeah, I remember having Ultima Weapon. I wouldn't mind playing through Kingdom Hearts again. It's been a long time. I think it's on our list, isn't it? Probably. Wouldn't surprise me. Should be. Yeah. It would surprise me if it wasn't. It, that I would agree with. What other games do we need to play? Oh, oh. How would you feel about playing Zombies Ain't My Neighbors? Like, seriously? Yeah. I don't know how far we would actually get, considering there's like 80,000 levels. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't think it's a game that we could complete. It just seems like it'd be fun to play. Maybe. <laughs> now, the next important question is, how would you feel about spending $60 on that Super Nintendo game? About as good as I'd feel about spending $60 on a current generation game. I'm not 100% sure what that means. Because there's some I, games I, I, I think that it. are worth it. Okay, I don't generally do it. Fair enough. Yeah, we got a copy in at the shop. It's like, it's complete in box, which is like the only reason why I haven't picked it up because that adds so much onto the price. Uh huh. But like, it's in really good shape. Like, the box has one of those, uh, like plastic box cases over it. So, like, the whole thing's like pristine and huh. it's 100% complete and all that. And it's like, I want this game because I know it's a good game. I know I would enjoy playing it. But I don't want to spend the money <laughs> on a brand new copy. Not quite new, but in a collectible condition copy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd be fine with just the cartridge. Yeah, I'd you know? like, wait for it to show up somewhere, like, but even without yeah. the box or so. Something, like, cheap. Yeah. One thing I've been debating on doing, actually, is uh, we have this little... Uh, adapter so you plug it into a super nintendo and you can play the F super famicom games on it and we tested it out it works perfectly like huh. uh, i have one super famicom game and we put it in a super nintendo and sure enough it played so i've been debating on picking that up because the japanese versions of super nintendo games are generally cheaper hmm. like significantly That's like interesting like Mega Man X3 alone, the cartridge would cost like a hundred and fifty bucks. 
But like, I could get Rockman X one, two, and three for under a hundred. Huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. With the only downside being, you would have to know Japanese to play it. Well, that's why I'd get games like, to like Mega un- Man to you understand know? the story at least. Yeah, that's why I'd get games like Mega Man where like it's more about the action than. Uh, yeah. Like I wouldn't get like Final Fantasy VI as cool yeah. <laughs> as that would be to have a cartridge of. Wouldn't be worth it because I wouldn't know what the fuck I yeah, was see, doing. See, see, that's what wait, what you do is you play it in Japanese, but make up your own story for it. Yeah, like on the fly. Oh god, that would be funny. <laughs> but like the issue comes when like there's like menus and like wait what <sighs> spell is this and yeah. oh my god what am i doing yeah there is that yeah but i thought of that i i think it'd be funny um the the retron 5 actually we found out that you can download um like the english patches people have made for some of the japanese oh, games oh that's cool and like put those on the sd card and actually play the Japanese cartridge with an English patch. Because huh. of the way it does the thing. It, like, the way the Retron 5 works, it basically, like, dumps the ROM from the cartridge and, like, runs it like an emulator. Hmm. So you're still technically playing it from the cartridge. It's just... Yeah. It, like, downloads the game and then emulates it from the cartridge. Pretty much. Hmm. Yeah. So, but because of that, you're able to run, like, English patches for, like, the Japanese games, we found out. That's... It totally works. It's kind of awesome. Yeah. So, that's always an option, too, if I ever wanted to play something story-oriented. As long as there was an English patch out there for it. That's the other key. Yeah. (laughs) You could always learn Japanese and translate it yourself. Nah, that sounds like way too much effort. (laughs) I, I don't... I don't have the strength to do that. I mean, that sounds like more work than teaching myself how to animate, and I've yet to finish an animation, so. Well, yeah, I mean, animation, it's like, you're basically just learning how to draw the same thing a bunch of times. I I still don't fully understand all the things that are in Flash. I've messed with it a lot, but there's so many tools. You probably won't even use, like, 75% of the things that are in Flash. Oh, I know. I'll probably just stick to frame by frame stick figure stuff if I go back and mess with that again. I mean, if all you do <laughs> is frame by frame, you will use probably the fill tool and the paintbrush tool. Yeah, that and that's about like right. it. That sounds about maybe what a, I maybe occasionally do. like the select and move around things tools. Yeah, but like everything else is is like it's related to drawing, but. It's like click and drag to move lines around kind of drawing. Yeah. Which is not what you usually do for frame-by-frame animation. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean... Flash is, like, really easy to do that in, though. Because you have the, like, onion skin and all that. Yeah. I I love the... Like, when I found out about that, I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, my animations are still kind of choppy. Well, that's how but, it goes. You know, you just have to deal with eighty trillion times until you're as good as like everybody on the internet. Yay! I have a goal to work towards. <laughs> Get as uh, good at animation as everybody on the internet, but never be as popular. You know what? As long as there was, like, someone out there who enjoyed it, it'd be yeah. worth it. But Or you could God. just cheat and do a Game Grumps animated. Yeah. There's a lot of animators that, like, that's what they start with. They're just like, hey, look, Game Grumps animated, and then people and find like, out oh about it. And like, oh my them. God, Game Grumps! Oh, hey, you do other animations, too. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Neat. Yeah. <sighs> It's a good way to start, though. Just, like, yeah. pulls in an audience, Having and then you can do your own stuff from there. And, like, even just as animation practice, yeah. like, working with pre-generated audio, instead of having to be like, oh, I have to write a script and then find someone to voice act it, and then make sure it sounds okay, and then make sure that everything matches up the way it does in my head. 
Or and, even if you're just doing, like, fight animations, like, yeah, there's, uh, like, what sound effects to use and all the fight choreography. Yeah. Yeah. Don't have to worry about that with, like, Let's Play animated things. Or, conversely, if that's all you worry about, you end up making, like, those little stick figure murdering each other animations that everybody and their dog does. But there is it's definitely, a, it's like... It's not a bad way to practice, but... I don't know, I think there's definitely, your... like, a quality difference, though, between different stick figure animations. Like, there's some that are more well-known than others. Well, yeah. Well, like, there's ones that are known for just being, like, violent, like Killing Spree. Yeah. Like, that's just known for being kind of over the top. But, like, from an animation perspective, it's not that fantastic mm-hmm. if you go back and watch those. But then there's other ones, like the guy who, uh, like, he did the League of Legends yeah. one, and then, like, he's done ones for, like, their, sh- like, shows and stuff at, like, Worlds now because, like, they're really high quality. Like, he puts... He, like, draws, like, the special effects and stuff. <laughs> it's really cool, actually, watching some of his tutorials, because, like, it's just, like, little dots, but then you play it, and it's, like, it's like a Hadouken. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> Magic. Basically. That's like 90% of animation. Magic. Like, it's like 1% knowing how to draw, 1% like timing, and then 98% happens by magic. Yeah. I'd believe it. And like magic, some people are really good at it, and some people just don't quite have a handle on it. Yeah. It's just on that long list of things I want to do, but I'll probably never get around to. <laughs> I just hope uh, that other YouTube channel I'm working on doesn't become one of those things. Don't I, let I, it, and it won't. I, I'm trying, man. Get motivated! Get well, motivated! So I started recording audio, and then, like, the next day I got sick. Oh, that sucks. So I haven't... I'm kind of stuck in this moment where it's like, I want to work on things, but I don't want to write more scripts because I already have, like, four episodes that are, like, partially started. Yeah. And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. But I need to record audio, and I can't because I'm sick. (laughs) I mean, I feel like that's a reasonable excuse for not, like, getting something done. Like, if you're physically unable to actually do anything... I don't think anybody can blame you for not doing anything. Yeah. It's just a frustrating setback. Yeah. I get that. So. But I do not plan on letting that fall apart. Like. I may have missed my initial, like, goal. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to miss my, like, secondary time frame goal. Which is why I'm not setting a third one. Yeah. I'm just like... I'm going to get it done eventually. Not worrying about the future. I'll just lean on past accomplishments. Yeah. That's, that's Move a, forward. That's the way to do it, really. Is to yeah. not... Like, you can set a deadline, but don't tell anybody about it. Because then they'll expect it then. Yeah. And if you're not done, you have to be like, Well, sorry, I'm pushing it back to this date. And then it gets to that date and it's still not done. And everyone's like, Well, where the fuck is it? And then you're just like, Well, it'll get done when it's done. Yeah. Because it's like, I mean, I could release it now, but it'll be shit. Yeah. Or I could keep delaying it, and when I do release it, it'll actually be good. Versus releasing it now and having it just be shit forever. Yeah. If only some game company could understand that concept. Nah, that would make way And if only sense. some didn't understand it so well. <laughs> like, uh certain company that shall remain unnamed that doesn't know how to count to three. A certain game that rhymes with Schmaff Schmaff Schmee Schmaff has, Schmaff Schmee hasn't come out yet. No, I don't get it. Yeah. It's because I was talking in code so I didn't have to say Half-Life 3 again. Oh, shit. Oh, damn! <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny... Because I, like, I personally don't really care, because I still have yet to play Half-Life 2. So, 
I mean, I haven't played Half-Life 1, but from my understanding, that's not really a requirement. Yeah, like, you can read the wiki page for, like, Half-Life 1 and get what you need from the story. Like, you should play it eventually, but... Yeah. If it's... Like, nowadays, if it's your first Half-Life game, you're just kind of going to kind of be like, I don't get it. Why is this a big deal? Because you didn't play it in the 90s, when it was a big deal. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, there was something I was going to say, but I lost my train of thought. Let's see, something about Half-Life, there was... Games being delayed. Yeah. Games not being delayed that should, should, that aren't. I don't know. I'm sure it'll come to me later. Or not. Doesn't matter. Probably wasn't important. <laughs> Early access games! I'm so on the fence with early access. Like, it's kind of cool, but at the same time, like, once you've played it, like, you generally don't go back to games very often. Yeah, that's true. So, like, you play a game in early access, it's like, okay, this is cool, maybe I'll come back to it when it's finished, and then, like, it gets finished, but you never actually go back to it. Yeah. it's like, I've played that. I mean, it, it works for some games better than it does for, uh, like, t- certain types of games. Yeah. Like, if Terraria or, like, other Minecraft kind of games, where the whole point is to explore and build stuff and find yeah. new things, it works for that because you'll want to go back yeah. and see, oh, they added this and update whatever, whatever. That sounds interesting. Maybe I'll start up a new game. But if it's, like, a straightforward point A to point B story kind of game. Yeah. I don't really see much point in early access for something like that at all. Like, just finish the game and release it when it's done instead of releasing, like, this piece of shit with its crappy placeholder art and stock sound effects and everything like that. You could just put those in and release the full game. Oh, God. Speaking of shitty placeholder art um so i recently started replaying through embrick of wolfhammer's castle i'm actually replaying through it a third time already like i started another file shut up phone um <laughs> <laughs> it's like yay Fluttershy is very excited for you playing it again uh, i mean i'm excited too but uh, um for yeah. a whole different reason uh cuz it's Easily within my top ten games, actually. But, um... So, after I played through it this, this second time through, I was like... I wonder how far the, the sequel ever got. Because the guy was working on a sequel, so... Oh. I go to the forum. There hasn't been a post in, like, two years. <laughs> oh, which sucks. made me kind of sad. And so I decided to go ahead and download the demo. And, uh... Like, there's scenes that'll pop up and it'll have like this like really shitty bad like ms paint thing where it's like (laughs) it'll have like little arrows with like descriptors and stuff and it was really funny and it's like i'm so sad this get this didn't get finished though because like it's kind of interesting like the second one was gonna have two main characters with like two simultaneous stories so like you choose who you're playing through as Uh so I, of course, picked the character that was uh, one of the characters from the first game to kind of, like, get the most direct continuation. And I just got really sad playing through, and I was like, oh, no, this is sad. People are dying. Everything is wrong. <laughs> but then, like, I reached the end of that segment because it's uh, there's not a lot of it there yet. Uh-huh. And, like, I'm like, what? That's it? That's all I get? No, I need more. What the hell? <laughs> so I was just, like, frustrated... Because it just made me really sad, and then I didn't even get a chance to find anything to make me happy. So then I tried the other character, and... I don't know. There was, like, some interesting stuff, like, mechanically, that the guy was trying to do with the game that I could already tell was starting to pop up. But, again, it's not very complete, so, like, there wasn't much to experience, and I was just kind of left with, like, this feeling of, (laughs) oh, But, just for the scenes where it was like a little bad MS Paint thing. That just there, made me if laugh. If the final version ever does get released, there should be an option to play the whole game in shitty MS Paint mode. Oh god, that would be funny. <laughs> well, like the first one had this uh, area you could go to that had a uh, 
like a picture gallery with some of the stuff that just wasn't used in the game, like some of the fan art and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's someone who did this picture for. Uh, there's this scene with this one character, and like she shows up, and she's like this powerful uh, leader of the dark elves or whatever, and she's like intimidating. So it's like her standing there, and she has like her two guards with her, and it's kind of like a cool little picture. And then there was like an alternate version for the princess, who's like this horrible person that the duchess doesn't like at all and uh it's like the same thing but it's like bad emma's paint she has like lopsided boobs and like this <laughs> weird like derp face it's really funny and like you can look at that picture in the gallery wow but yeah i didn't even realize initially that uh it was supposed to be like the alternate version of that picture until <laughs> later and i was like ha that's funny Wow. Uh, God, uh, playing through that again, though, uh, there's all the D&D jokes that I kind of got the first time playing through, uh-oh. but since we hadn't done D&D yet, I didn't fully understand the joke, and now playing through it again, it's like, ha, that makes more sense to me now, because I, I get it more. Yeah. We've actually done D&D now. I miss D&D. I do too. We did not get very far. We did not. <laughs> I I barely remember. Like I kind of have an idea of what I was gonna do, but I know there were a lot of things I had thought of that I wanted to do that are just gonna be lost to time because it's like nope, been too long. <sighs> it's unfortunate. It was fun. I remember the. I think the last thing we did was that. We got, like, two, like, the big main town. Yeah. And then that was, like, where we left off. Pretty much. Um. Yeah. I, I stole I, a suit of armor from a guard. I don't By even... accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember, like, I, I kind of was starting to put you on to, like, the story and then was going to let you guys kind of dictate where the fuck you were going to go. Like, yeah. that's why I had a map. But, um, yeah, I, uh, I don't think you even got to Celestia. I mean, not a pony. <laughs> I mean, the whole D&D campaign <laughs> wasn't a secretly, uh, a pony campaign that was not so well disguised. <laughs> the funny thing is, I don't think anybody actually picked up on it. I think there's a couple things that maybe, like, you and Phil picked up on. But beyond, well, I, I knew about it from the beginning. Well, yeah, that's much. true. Yeah, because I think we talked about it previously. But like, I I know there's got to be at least a couple things that Phil obviously picked up on. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure if uh, like if some of the details were picked up on at all by uh, Corey and Kevin. <laughs> and uh, that's what makes it so great. Yeah. As much as I would like to, I don't think we would ever get back to that campaign. Like, I would want to do something different, probably. So, uh, I think it's safe to kind of spoil something I remember I was going to do. So, um, like, you know, I had you guys choose a faction, right? Yeah. So, I remember when you guys were talking about, like, which faction to join... For D&D lore reasons, Corey and Kevin didn't want to join, like, the lunar side because, like, that particular god is, like, a trickster god, so they were like, oh, this person's going to be untrustworthy, right? Yeah. Well, so it turns out that that's the, of the two NPCs I created that were going to be reoccurring characters, that's the one that isn't going to betray the party. <laughs> Like, the other one is actually the one who's going to end up being the double agent and betraying the party at some point. Wow. <laughs> it's funny, because the trickster god's agent is the one who's actually totally cool. Yeah. It, like, which you would never expect from a trickster god, which is why it's the perfect, like, thing. <laughs> yeah, and, like, it's funny, because they were doing it based off of D&D lore reasons, and, like, nothing was really based on D&D lore reasons. <laughs> Like, everything was just kind of like, I can, like, kind of roll with this idea if I base it on this thing, and I can do this. So when does Discord come into play? 
Oh, that was actually going to be, like, the big reveal at the end. Um, Chaos. So, like, the the I remember I had the whole thing of, like, there was trouble that was caused in the past by, like, this new religion that popped up that was, like, neutral. And there was, like, this whole thing. And I was basically going to have it be, like, that was chaos. Like, hmm. that was basically Discord, Sheagorath, pulling the strings there. And, uh, like, in the end, after you beat, like, one of them, uh, depending on which side you guys went with, um, I was going to have, like, there be a confrontation after that where it's like, well, now you know that Shorgaoth's been, uh, Discord's been pulling the strings the whole time. It's, you're all just pawns of madness. <laughs> and it was just this whole ploy to get one of them out of the way because he knew he could take the other one solo. And then he would become the big bad kind of thing. I, I had some ideas here. I'm not going to be able to articulate them well with my notes. Because I did have notes on some of the bigger details that I wanted to get to. But, you yeah, know. <laughs> um, speaking of D&D, one, a new like Tumblr I, Tumblr I started following recently. Out of context D&D. Oh god. It's basically like people just post quotes from like their uh, what they've been playing. Like, just random things that people have said. Some of them are, uh... That sounds magical. It's pretty amazing, some of the ones I found. Like, fuck, what was it? There was... Oh, there was one that I really liked recently. Fuck, let me see if I can find it. Um... Shit, I don't know how to navigate my fucking mobile interface for this shit. Likes, there it is. Oh. I guess magical girls are essentially warlocks. <laughs> <laughs> um, that raises so many questions. I, like, there's the part of me that agrees with the statement, and then there's the part of me that wonders, like, how that came up in context. It's okay. I'm lawful good, not lawful nice, the party paladin. <laughs> Oh, man. That's, that's good. <laughs> I want the hand of your firstborn daughter to eat. Just the hand. Okay. Rogue hires ten prostitutes to start a book club. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> like, that's just the action that the rogue did. <laughs> it's not a quote. It's just the thing he did. <laughs> uh, but, like, wait, what? <laughs> exactly. Do you believe in spiders in a young girl's heart? The ship's captain, after scanning a space Cthulhu a little too closely. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, this, they post like 20 of these a day. And oh my god. Every single one of them is... <laughs> is fucking gold. You might have to link me that. Yeah. Because that, <laughs> that sounds pretty good. I might enjoy that thoroughly. Is that the paladin from the brothel incident? Sorry, without pie on his face, he wouldn't recognize him. The more I think about <laughs> we, that... We've only had two sessions, and now you summoned the actual devil. But yeah, okay, D and D. Good times. I, I really wish we could get back into that. Yeah, I feel like the best way we would possibly be able to do that would be like via tabletop simulator. From what I've experienced with that, I'm not even sure how that would work. Like, if we use it just for the pieces, well, and still had like all of our stuff on paper. Yeah, maybe. I think the best way to do character sheets would be on paper. Like, dice rolling would be easy in Tabletop Simulator. Yeah, it's, like, designed like, for that. Yeah, I could even do, um, like, secret dice rolls as, like, a DM. Like, that wouldn't be an issue. Um, and, like, yeah, pieces would be fine. Like, 
using the base models in the game we'd be limited. Like I'd probably have to download some packs and stuff to yeah. load those into the, the game. The most tedious part would be actually building like the world and like the maps and everything. Yeah. From what cuz I mess with that a little bit and it's kind of a pain in the ass. At most I'd probably just have like a flat image of like a map and then you guys could like move the pieces around on the map and mm-hmm. like we'd have to go for a little more like role play format. Like fourth edition doesn't lend itself well to it. Mm-hmm. Because like fourth edition is very uh specific with its things, but I think like with the something that was a little more role play we could probably pull it off. Mm. What which uh which one was it that we've been using that we were using? Fourth. That's what I thought. Yeah, we're Fourth is very new player friendly because it's a lot simpler than other ones. That's like my general understanding. Hmm. The, there was always plans to maybe move to like 3.5 because that one's considered better. Like better. widely by D&D people who have been doing it for years. Which is fine. I'd be okay <laughs> with that. One thing I wish that I got around to that I wanted to do was like write up... Um, like a the siren class based on Borderlands. Oh yeah. Like I had ideas for it on like how to translate some of the abilities. I had like the ability lists of the siren and I think I was using I was going to use monk as like a template for like how to uh divvy up stuff cuz I felt like that was the one that was closest to siren like by default as far as like what major skills are used and such. Yeah, sounds about right. But, never got around to it. Oh, well. It's one of those many projects that I'll never finish. Alternatively, we could just go full on pony D&D campaign. Yeah. That's that's a doable thing. Just like, instead of, like, all the major classes just have, like, Pegasus, or a pony, or a unicorn. Go. (laughs) Oh, no. I feel like it'd have to be a little more complex than that. But... Yeah, probably. Like, I mean, those like, are your those race are... options. Yeah, those are. The... Yeah, there you go. And then you have like class <laughs> options within that. Yeah. I don't know. I actually think you could do a pretty complex like character thing with like based on the My Little Pony universe because like yeah, there's the ponies. But then there's, like, also other races. Like, you could have, like... Griffins. Griffins. Everybody would want to be a griffin. Donkeys. Deer. Nobody would want to be a donkey. Zebra. <laughs> Dude, I'd be a donkey. I'd be a donkey warlock. <laughs> I was going to say zebra would make a good shaman. Yeah. But, you know... The only... Like, I think there's a lot of your, options Your penalty there. is that you have to speak in rhyme. Like, in, whenever you're in character... <laughs> Dude, I'm in it. <laughs> Dude, you could be a minotaur. I do not like to roll the dice. They do not seem very nice. <laughs> that would actually probably get really hard for me. I'd have a hard time coming up with stuff like that on the spot. I'd probably end up with like really derpy ass rhymes where I'm just like You will never get out alive. That is why you're not alive. <laughs> <laughs> Just use the same word. <laughs> you can't use the same word. That doesn't count. Shut your Who mouth. Wants to follow you me s- to the creepy statue. <laughs> Shut your mouth, little fellow, or I'll beat you with a cello. <laughs> Uh, You're really working on the whole rhyming thing, aren't you? I'm trying, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's how all my lines would end up if I tried to do that. <laughs> I might have to <laughs> I might have to write a character like that just for the purpose of doing it badly. <laughs> like have a few like 
pre-written lines that are like thought out and like pre-planned, but just most of them just be whenever, derp whenever off the top ha- of my whenever head. Whenever you have to improvise, it's like actually terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's called method acting. Uh yeah, it'd be fun to do. D&D Cheer then. up, little one. It's not so bad. Maybe you won't feel so sad. Just listen to what I've said. <laughs> uh, but yeah. God. Thinking of all the things I've like started and just not finished is like, damn it. <laughs> I know the feeling. I mean, I could just like look over to my left... And I can count, like, 80 things that are started and unfinished. (laughs) Most of them are miniatures. Some of them are, like, 3D life counters. But most of them are miniatures. And there's one of the Game Boys I wanted to paint. I actually got a bunch of parts for SPs, because someone left, like, a bag of parts at the shop. So Just parts? Yeah, parts. There's a couple boards in there. I'm not sure if any of them work. I don't think there's any screens. I haven't really gone through the bag yet. But huh. I, I want to see if any of that stuff works because it'd be nice to have the spare parts. And then I can replace parts of the shell that I messed up. Like the one that I drilled a hole through with the screw because I used the wrong screw in the wrong <laughs> place. Okay. I used one of the long screws where I was supposed to use one of the short screws. And I didn't realize until I felt it coming through the other side <laughs> into my finger. <laughs> So, the hell did you... so if you like look at it, there's like a little like dot there where the screws started coming out. <laughs> yeah. Okay then. I'm pro. Don't question it. That's why it's the test console. <laughs> okay. But I might actually if I can just replace that piece, it, that'll solve my issue. Cause I won't have to worry about it. But yeah, I felt really smart when I did that. <laughs> I was like, hmm, now I know. And knowing is half the battle. Fuck, we're only at 52 minutes. Oh man, we gotta get at least eight more minutes of rambling in. Ramble, 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 <laughs> ramble. Ramble, 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 ramble. You work on anything art related recently? <laughs> that was a thing we used to do. <laughs> Oh, yeah, huh? <laughs> we used to draw things. And comics. And comics. Yeah, I haven't done an episode of Spider-Verse in a while. Which yeah. is weird because, like, I actually kind of started it off, like, in a, in the direction of a story. It's just kind of not going that way. <laughs> like. It just kind of fell apart. No, it's, it's like, I've got it. Like, I've got, like, point A and point D in my head. I just need B B and C, like, in there somewhere. Yeah, that's kind of where I've been at for, like, three years now. I mean, that's that's kind of the problem with making up a, 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 like, overall story as you go along. Yeah. It's, It's like, I want to have a part of the story where this happens. How do I get from here... To all these other places in between, and eventually to there. Yeah. Well, it was like when I was writing Zan Shlu, like, my hard part was going from shows up in the universe, decides to be a ninja. Pr- be a ninja. Like, there was a huge in-between section of, like, how do I go about him deciding to, like, practice parkour and, like, like evolving in a way where that's, like, natural and then becoming, like, a badass, you know? Yeah. It's, I think, what I ended up with, I think, works both from, like, the story side that I wanted to go and, like, still sticking with, like, the silly humor that has always been kind of present in the comics. I think it fits both of those well enough, what I came up with, but there's still a lot, like, to go before it's, like, fully fleshed out, but... I have a pretty good chunk of script. I just haven't touched it in hmm. like a year. It's rough. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely have, I know, like, where Spider-Verse is going from where it is. I just need to actually make the comics to take it there. Yeah. Which is, you know, kind of another thing about having time to work on it versus doing other things that I might want to do. Yeah. Like everything else I ever do. My time's been getting eaten up by Minecraft and Evolve. Been having a lot of fun with those, though. And then, of course, Monster Hunter, but... I don't see that stopping, ever. I have been playing Borderlands the pre-sequel because it went on sale and I finally bought it. Which character do you play as? Nisha. Nice. How far in are you? I am, like, level 10... Because I've been doing, like, every side quest that comes along, so... I haven't been going through the story very fast, just kind of... Yeah. At my usual rate. I'm, like, level 10 or 11. Might be a little ahead of where, like... Because, like, when I got the game, I started a solo character. I was playing as Wilhelm. I didn't get too far in. I was kind of waiting for more people to get the game. But, uh, Corey picked it up, and we had started characters... I don't think you're too far ahead of where we were, but it's been a while and I don't remember exactly where we were. But I just uh <clears throat> like the little hover bike thing that you get. Yeah. Like I just got to the part where you have to like you have to use that to like jump over the one gap to get to the next like map area. That was like where I left off. I think I know where you're talking about. I don't know. Yeah, because there's like, there's like a batch of side quests that you unlock alongside the main storyline at that point. Yeah. So I went through the area where you're supposed to like do the stuff to get that, <clears throat> but I didn't actually do it. Yet. <clears throat> yeah. So like the the literally the last thing I did was you actually continue that uh, main story quest and get to the next area where there's like the. The new bunch of side quests and stuff. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm past that with Wilhelm, because I played a decent chunk. I want to say I was like 16 or something. I don't know. But, um... Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how far ahead of, like, where me and Corey were. That is. I don't know. We'll I figure it out. I also named my character Japalak. Of course you And did. found the perfect, like, an unbelievably perfect skin. Really? Yeah. Aw, oh, man. Like, it's like an orange jacket and, like, bright yellow hair. Oh, my God. That's with so the perfect. cowboy hat. It's so perfect. Like, that is unbelievably perfect. And keeping with the, like, cowboy gunslinger theme, even. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. That is, like, my favorite part of it, too. Yeah, um... So let's see. So far, I've I had... My Siren in Borderlands 2, Spylight Twarkle. <laughs> <laughs> and my Mechromancer was Danebow Rash. Of course it was. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, that's a thing. Fair enough. Yeah. I So, yeah, I have Wilhelm for my solo character, and then I have Jack for multiplayer. The Jack's doppelganger. Oh, yeah. He has some of the funniest lines, like... I can imagine. Like, one of them was, uh... Someone asked him, like, how did a, uh... Because, like, at that time, Jack's just, like, a tech, yeah. right? So it's like, how come a uh, tech has a, uh... Body double? And your response is, He has great ambitions, and I have student loans. <laughs> Uh, I'm like, that's really funny. Yeah, writing is just always been a strong point in Borderlands. Yeah. But I feel like we've talked Borderlands, like, to, to death, death on Spellcast. And it's about time to tell everybody that we'll see them next week, but probably not next next week. Next time. Sometime in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. 
And maybe by then we'll have played enough Borderlands pre-sequel to have new things to talk about that are Borderlands related. I don't like the lasers because they don't explode. <laughs> I love those quests. Yeah. Beep the fuck boop. Alright. Something, again? something, butts. Penis. Penis! Penga. Penis! Yeah, see, I'm not. I'm yelling, and I'm not clipping it now, and it's still staying about middleish, and that's why we want it. Fuck. Okay. Yeah. No. That's good. Holy shit! Uh, we sound like a couple of crazy people. Neighbors will be calling the cops. Cause it's Halloween. It's screaming. It's Halloween. Everyone expects to hear screaming and crazy randomness. You're right. We need to find like like a like an audio clip of like a woman screaming like she's being murdered, kind of screaming, like something <laughs> like iconically like something that, that will... sounds like someone's being attacked, and then we'll play it really loud, like turn my speakers all the way up, and then see what happens. You know, it's kind of weird that we would need a, a recording of a woman screaming to bring the police. <laughs> Nobody's gonna care if they hear a man screaming for his life. But if it's a woman screaming, even if it's an obvious recording, they're going to be like, hey, somebody just got murdered next door. Well, I, it's, it's just like, it tends to be a more panicked-sounding scream. Men don't scream as loud, generally. <laughs> like, not necessarily always. <laughs> that was, was gross. 